Hello there guys, today I will show you how you create a step counter. So in the top left you can see here is an image, a text image. And when we take a step it counts the steps. And it also tells you when you reach a certain amount of steps. So here is 45 steps. And yeah, you. You can think of it like uh, in the old Pokemon games there where the Safari Zone, I don't know how it's called in English, but I think it's maybe the same. <laughs> so uh, you could walk around for 500 steps, uh, so you could pay to go get in some area and could walk around for 500 steps. And after these 500 steps you get kicked out to the uh, entrance again and have to pay again to walk 500 steps in that zone. and. Yeah, this is something you could do with it, or simply count the steps in general, and yeah, work work with the numbers you get. So to do this, uh, I already did this here, as you can see. So I don't need this. And first uh, thing we need to do is to enable the text picture plugin. So you double click here. So um, let's do it from the beginning. So I delete this here. So this is how it would normally look and then you click here and click on the three dots here and this is already built in so you don't need to download anything or uh, stuff like that you have it from the beginning you simply have to activate it so and this says it's text picture JS this plugin provides a comment to show a text uh, show text as a picture so as you could see in the top left corner this was the, the text I showed as a picture and it's easier to handle like that, so we can do it in a short, uh, short way. So, as you can see, it says use it in the following procedure: call the plugin command, set text picture, and execute show picture without specifying an image. All right, that should be easy. So. All right, so the, the first thing I want to do is I want to set the trigger to parallel and we call it a step counter or whatever you like. And the first thing I will do here is to create the text and uh, display it on the, on the screen. So we go to plugin command and we choose text picture as it says call the plugin command set text picture and then you can go to this text and edit uh, the text you want to display so i simply give out a variable so in my case because i already set up the variables and switches i needed uh, I knew, I know it's uh, variable 5, uh, don't forget the uh, backslash here, and when we call on it, I could say something like steps, so we know how many steps we took, and after we did this, you only to show the image, you need to uh, show a picture and leave it blank here. Uh, picture number one. Yeah, 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 it's all right. After that, and if we start the game now, you can see that we will get displayed our message. So now we see it's an image, but it's it's created from a text. That's a pretty nice feature. And afterward, we want to count our steps. So how can we do this? So how do we detect the step? So you need to think of it like that. So we can, with uh, variables, we can store the current position with x and y. So one variable for the x position and one uh, variable for the y position. And if you get X and Y together, you know the location of your player. So you now you can see it on uh, the bottom here. My X position is 8. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 
seven. Oh no no no! <laughs> I got confused here. So my position is eight and six, and it uh, starts with zero. So it's six from the uh, top. So one uh, zero one two three four five six, and from left to right it's eight. So you can see that here my cursor is here now. So it's eight from left to right. So zero one two three four five six seven eight. So you know your position is eight six. And to get this here, you simply need to check with uh, variables. You can. So I already named those variables, uh, and as you can see, the variable number five we have chosen for the steps uh, in the text. You can see now why I choose the number five because you see it's uh, number five here. So steps is number five. So here we will uh, count the steps. And to get the x and y coordinate, we simply choose uh, play x or call. Uh, you can take whatever variable you want as long as you check the same one later. So if you choose number one here, you need to check number one later. But uh, Let's leave it like that for now. So it's player. I called it player x, and so we get the x position, and then we choose a character player map x. So the x position of my player gets stored in that variable with the name player x, and after that we can copy this and paste it. So ctrl c and ctrl v to copy and paste it. Or you can also go here, copy it, and paste it. So now we need to edit the second one. And we choose player Y. And also we choose map Y. So we in this place we got the X and Y coordinate from the player. And we need this to determine if the player moved. So if this so we also create uh, two other variables to check the new x and y position of a player. So if if the new x and y position of a player is different to the old x and y position, we know that the player moved uh, one one step. And so we can simply uh, check this. So to so we could have one issue here if if I leave it like that, our player will our x and y position because it's a parallel process so it runs over and over and over again so to uh, avoid from these variables uh, to get overwritten we simply create a switch so we switch the side so we i called this one step so it's uh, in my case uh, switch number one and this is step and we turn this on so we can create a new page and it gets activated if step one is on. So if this happened, this will get set on and this side won't be executed anymore. It's only this side that now will be executed. And we also need to set it to parallel. And now we can check, uh, now we can do this again, but uh, for new x and y coordinate. So we can compare those two to the new uh, x and y coordinates. So how to do it? It's pretty simple as before. We choose our new variables. So be careful here that you don't take the old ones. I called it uh, player x new and uh, player y new. And now we can do the same again. Player x, uh, player uh, map x and hit OK and hit OK here and now we can copy and paste it again and edit the second one and here we choose uh, player Y new and here of course we, cha uh, we choose player map, uh, map Y so we get the new uh, so it, so just for you to understand, we save the current position of a player here and afterwards we switch to that side and check for the new positions of a player. 
And now we need to check if the new uh, positions uh, are matching the old positions. And if it's not the case, so if player X uh, match doesn't match player X new, then we knew that he moved on the X axis, so left or right. If player Y new isn't matching to player Y, we knew he's uh, he moved along the Y axis. And to check this, we simply choose a conditional branch take our variable that we use on site 1 or page 1 and here we compare those two here's uh, the thing you can to, uh, compare them like that and this means uh, is not uh, so if player x is not player x new so if those are not the same then we know that the player must have moved one moved one tile so we can here change the variable of the steps, which we use to count our steps. So we choose this and we add this by one. And afterwards you can copy this and paste it here and edit it. So you now choose uh, player Y and also choose player y new so again you compare player y to player y new and if it's not the same then this here will happen and this is what it does it counts the steps plus one and now if it if that happens so we want to check if it's not on the same position we want to turn this page off again and jump back to this page so we get a new position for our player X and Y. So how we do it, we simply go here uh, inside our conditional branch and we change our switch uh, back to off again. So now, and we also need to copy this here, so on both cases, so if we moved on the X or the Y axis, uh, this step thing will go back to the first page and will detect a new step. And now we can test it and see if it works. So as you can see on the top we got zero steps and now you see it's counting properly. So whenever we change the position of a player it counts steps. And the cool thing is you could also do this with um, only checking if left or right is pressed but the thing is if you stand on the edge here and press left then if you only check for key inputs then it would count up even though you aren't moving to the left here because you are against the wall so this is w way better way of handling this and also in the next step uh, we want to check how many steps a player has done so to check this we need to in between those two you need to check uh, how many steps the player had taken. So you take another conditional branch, uh, set it to variable, and watch for steps. So you basically now you're asking if steps is equal to, and now you can define a number which you like. So I simply chose 10 now. So if steps is 10 at this point, then you can show a message. You took 10 steps. So hit OK. And now you can uh, copy this conditional branch and also add it between those two. So click on switch, add paste. And now it should return us a message when we did 10, 10 steps. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And now it's all right, it's still on nine, but if you hit enter, you will see that it just hit this uh, tenth step. And that's it for this tutorial. Uh, thank you for watching.